So let everyone get there. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good. So hello and welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays with the Zen Yarn Garden. This is our Tutorial Tuesday and uh, these are sponsored by Zen Yarn Garden. We do have a coupon code for this evening which will get you 20% off of everything in the store. That is color and um, that coupon code is good for 48 hours from this evening. So hi, I'm Laura Cameron. I am one of the sample knitters for Zen Yarn Garden and they've invited me to participate in some of these tutorials. I also have here Anique and Suzanne is here. Hi. <laughs> and of course, Roxanne is behind the yarn. Um, and <laughs> she'll be here in chat adding some links. And so tonight we're gonna talk about color work. And this is actually a two part series um, we'll be talking about it tonight and next week, and Anik and I will sort of be sharing. Um, as I said last, a uh, couple weeks ago, when I um, talked about chart reading, I don't do a lot of knitting on camera because I am left-handed and I knit backwards, and that is confusing. So um, tonight we're going to talk about a couple kinds of color work, and I'm going to show you some samples, and then Anik is going to talk to you a little bit about tutorials. So when you hear color work, a lot of people um, get nervous about it and color work can mean a lot of things. Um, color work can mean just using two colors in your knitting. So some of the simplest color work that you can do is things like add two colors to your socks, just adding contrasting heels, toes and cuffs. That can, um, that can be color work. So these are the Pebbles and Pathway Socks by uh, Hay Brown Berry, and I just used two colors in green and brown. Um, they also can be as simple as color blocks. So this is the Estian Shawl or Estian Shawl from um, Stephen West, and I used one color up top and then two colors in the lace, and actually the pattern does call for three colors. Um, but you can see that you can work with three colors and you're working, you're only working with one color at a time. You can also do something like stripes. This is the color affection shawl by Vera Valmaki. And um, those stripes can be kind of skinny or they can be wedges. They can be in all kinds of different shapes or different numbers of stripes, or you can use three different colors or two colors, whatever you want. Um, and finally, stripes do not all have to be the same length. This is the Rodenite shawl. It is from um, Hunter Hammerson's Pearls. And in this, I did stripes of varying widths and um, varied all my colors. So Anik is gonna talk a little bit about what to do when you're working with um, different colors in your knitting, even if you're only working with one color at a time. So go for it. All right. <laughs> Do you want your hands first or? Um, yeah, let's go directly to hands. All right, straight to hands. Here we go. So I think as a knitting teacher, um, which is what I used to do a long time ago before I was a rep for Zen, um, one of the most common questions that I got when um, starting color work was, how do I carry up the yarn? Um, there are a few ways of doing it. Um, the best way is the one that will end up consistent. So pick a way and do it that way the entire way. However, for someone who is completely newbie and doesn't know at all, we're just going to show carrying it up because when you actually introduce the new color, you just start knitting with the new color and you weave in your ends at the end. And we also have a great tutorial on weaving in ends that Suzanne did a few weeks ago. So those are all available on the YouTube channel. <laughs> so transferring colors. So I just finished a stripe of green here and I'm now gonna knit a stripe of the white or the pale. So I like to do what I like to call the candy cane method. If you guys can see that, it looks kind of like a candy cane going up the side. So how do I do this is by always consistently taking the yarn, the new one, from under and on top of the old one. So I always cross in the same direction. 
just that way. So my new color always crosses on top of the old color. So what does that mean in the actual real world is that I'm going to be holding the old color out of the way when I start the new color. So I'm going to knit across quickly. Now there's a reason I did a sample with seven stitches so that we can get back and forth very quickly or not if I drop stitches. <laughs> All right. So going back and we will have a chance to see it again because we are already back. Now this time my old color is the white and my new color is the green. So I'm going to cross the green over the white. Hold the white out of the way and start knitting. So you do want to be careful not to be too tight on the edge here. So I'm trying to stay in the camera there. So we're going to see it one last time when I go back and I will show it to you as a picker instead of a thrower, which is, as you can see, my natural state of being is a thrower. But for a picker, it's exactly the same thing. It's just the yarns will be positioned a little bit differently is all. So here we go. Switching yarn at the beginning of a row as a picker instead of a thrower. So this part remains the same. You're always going to be crossing in the same direction. So new color, which this time is the white on top of the old color. So I'm going to get that one ready to knit. And this time I'm just going to hold the old color out of the way with my right hand instead of the left. So there we go. That is all there is to it. Now, if you need to carry your yarn up more than one stripe. It's the same process, except that you're going to be twisting it twice. So just for speed's sake, I switch back to throwing here. Now, say I need to do another stripe with the white. So how am I going to carry up the green so that it's ready to knit when I need it? First, I'm going to untangle myself a bit here. Yes, color work, you will need to untangle your balls. It's fine. It's part of the process. It's part of the fun. Huh. All right. So if I need to knit, if I need to knit another stripe with the white, I still need to carry up the green. So same thing. I'm going to cross the green over the white. Then I'm going to recross again always in the same direction. So once again, the green up and over the white, the white up and over the green. So I'm crossing it twice, basically. What I'm doing is I'm wrapping the non-working yarn with my working yarn. So that is all you need to do if you need to carry it up more than one or two rows. Um, when should you cut the yarn? As a teacher, I would say um, if you need to do more than three or four rows, I would cut. Um, of course, it really depends on you and if you're going to be seeing the edges. And if you actually enjoy that sort of candy cane effect going up the side, you can carry it up 10 rows if you really want, as long as you keep it consistent and that you keep it fairly loose so that you're still able to stretch. That's another important part. So rules of carrying up yarn, 
it's really up to you. As a teacher, I tell you three or four is really the maximum. Then it's up to you if you follow that indication or not. And if you like the candy cane going up. So there we go. So that is carrying up the yarn. Um, was there anything else that we wanted to cover, Laura? I don't think so. Um, we did talk about some applications where you might want to carry the yarn versus cut the yarn. Um, yes. For instance, if you are knitting a striped sweater and you were going to add button bands afterwards or cuffs afterwards or a collar afterwards, you might not want to cut every single time because that's a lot of ends to weave in. Yep. And it will, if you're picking up for that button band, it will actually be hidden under there. On yep. the other hand, if you're knitting something like a baby blanket, um, you'll have that candy striping all the way up one side of the work and not the other. So you may want to think about it. Now, I will say that when I did, um, so to talk about the differences, I should have kept these much, much handier. So on this one, I definitely cut because I didn't want to carry because it was so many rows and I didn't, yeah. and, and because I was changing different colors so often, I wasn't just working in two colors. That said, on my color affection, I definitely did not cut even when I was working with three colors in a row because I didn't mind that the edge was going to have a little bit um, of, uh, of a candy stripe on it. Now, do note that I left lots of room, especially if you're doing shawls and in garter stitch, because Absolutely. you really do want to be able to stretch. Absolutely. And I did the same when I did my color affection. So great minds. <laughs> Okay. All righty. Well, we're about halfway. Suzanne, do you want to? Uh, sure. We're going to talk about some um, some things where it gives you the chance to use a little bit of color work. Um, so I think maybe Roxanne is going to show us um, on the website too. We have the Elfie T. Oh, first, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it has some really fun color work. I um, I got to have this sample and it, it's packed away right now, but it, it's just a really good tea. It fits really nicely. Um, you get to do some color work and it's in the round. So you don't even have to worry about um, what it looks like on, you know, on your edge because you can do your carrying up inside on the wrong side. Um, so that's a really, really fun fun, nice t-shirt here, um, just two different colors and uh, in a fingering weight. That's a fun one. And um, are we gonna go on with a little bit more or should we talk about the other, the- The other two are also your... more stripe and color block. Not, yeah. Um... yeah. So yes. And then uh, Nick has the the fade too. Are you gonna do that one? Oh or... yeah, the fade. Should we do that? Which, um, since the sample that we have is in speckles, in splatters, um, you actually don't see the stripes. <laughs> yeah, it goes away. <laughs> but yeah. there are, I promise you, there's a color work in here. <laughs> so it's a great intro to color work and a very, very, very simple lace as well. So, which we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can you can sort of see if you hold it back up, you can sort of see where the yellow yarn starts to come in. Yep. You can see that there are some garter stripes, which kind of ease the transition between the two. Mm -hmm. So and that's where you'd be carrying up at the edge and just yep. working a couple rows in each color. Exactly. Which, it, you're right. It is it, with the speckles. It is a little hard, but you could sort of see it with the yellow. I mean, this this is a great example of of fading because mm -hmm. it, you really can't see where it starts until all of a sudden there's a new color that pops up and you're like, oh, look, stripes. <laughs> and we so. we had a question about um, look, how the color change looks and how you do it if you do cut. And basically, if you if you do cut, you just have the ends to weave in, so mm -hmm. you just don't see the yep. the candy cane stripe up or anything. Yeah, you would just join as you would uh, join any other working yarn. Um, like even if you were just changing between skeins. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick, you had another really cool edge technique. Is that for like the advanced one or is that one? Uh, no, um, it, it definitely works. Uh, <laughs> I, I usually keep it for figuring yarns um, okay. because it's a little bit, it can be a little bit bulky in anything above a fingering weight. 
Um, but here we go. I can quickly show you as soon as I take the knot out of my <laughs> needle. <laughs> I, I happen to have it too, if you want me to show too, but. Um, there we go. Just let yeah. me get to the end. So one way of carrying up. Okay, we actually, I'm gonna stop you right there because we have a, a few more questions that are yep. like pertain more to the, the previous question. So mm -hmm. maybe we should get to those. Um, just the tricks for, um, for joining a new yarn and do you ever knot the yarns? And then um, like before you weave in the ends. So, so we'll talk about that just a little bit. <laughs> joining a new yarn, <clears throat> um, as a knitting teacher, my first reaction is no knots, <laughs> like Edna, no capes, no <laughs> knots ever. Um, does my knitting have knots? Yes. <laughs> find, find me a knitter who doesn't have knots in their knitting. <laughs> I, I will say that if you're worried about the tension at the edge, sometimes yeah. what I will do is I will tie a loose overhand knot while I am knitting which I will later untie and then weave in the ends. This is exactly um, what I was going to. Oh, show. I'm sorry. So again, <laughs> great minds. No, Laura, it's perfect. <laughs> so one way um, that you can, if you are worried about tension and having a loosey goosey, because normally what you do is simply start knitting with the new yarn. Now, as a fairly new knitter to stripes. This can be a little um, scary because everything is kind of loosey goosey at the edge here. So I can understand how that would be a little bit scary. Um, so one thing that you can do to mitigate that when you throw in a new yarn, as you can see, I am um, <clears throat> with my scissors cut the yarn. Yes, yes, I used scissors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So ah, I'm going to do a simple, not too tight, just a very simple knot around. So this is the new yarn. The green is the new. And I'm wrapping it around the old, which is the white. Just a very simple little knot, not too tight, that I'm then going to push up to where I need it to work. You can tighten that a little bit. Now, the advantage of doing this is that you can easily pick this out at the end, but your yarn is ready to go and it mitigates the little loosey-goosey aspect of it that can happen sometimes with color work. So let me just... When we try to she go said she knew we'd have a trick. <laughs> there we go. So it mitigates that loosey goosey aspect that can happen at the beginning. And it is easily picked out at the end so that you can weave them in and they look all nice and pretty. Because the goal is for it to be pretty to look at, right? So obviously, if it's going to be hidden, like Laura was saying, if it's going to be hidden in a button band, pff, leave it. <laughs> Or if you're going to crochet it. a border after on a blanket or something or too, that's a good way to hide You can hide definitely those. crochet a border and that will hide in all your ends. So lots of stuff. Did we have any more questions in the... No, I think that's good. So let's let's jump ahead because we have, we have another color work technique tonight. We have another. <laughs> so the second technique we're going to talk about is intarsia, which can also be known, is sometimes also known as picture knitting. And... Um, if you remember any of those crazy sweaters from the 80s that had like the bold geometric prints or the faces on the sweaters, um, that is where intarsia comes in. And all those intarsia, sweaters that are coming back in yes, style. Mm -hmm. Everything old oh, is joy. again. <laughs> um, so intarsia looks like pictures in your knitting where you have one section that's kind of concentrated of color um, and then the rest is a different color. And there are some techniques for knitting this that Nick is gonna talk about. But what I wanted to show you also is the back. So the way this was knit is it was knit with some red um, that I used in the middle and blue at either side. And one of the things that you do to close up some of the holes is you're gonna twist the yarns at the borders. So Which I is gonna look very familiar after the first part of the tutorial. You're gonna get your little candy caning. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> so I'll turn it over to Nick, who's going to show yep. you a little bit about how one would knit in Tarja. And she so, also has another sample. So here's another um, example of Intarsia. So Ooh. this is a sweater I did for my husband, which he doesn't wear because the yarn is too itchy. It's not zen. Mm, bad me. <laughs> but um, different color blocks with different colors. And the stripe going through is also in Tarza. So that was lots of fun. Lots of stuff going on um, for adventurous knitters. This was awesome. So highly recommend. It's called Buster. Um, so the fun part of Intarza, if we go to my hands, is these little guys. Bobbins. Woohoo! <laughs> Because when, um, and again, as a knitting teacher, my job is to show you how to do it correctly, then it's your job as a student to explore and to choose to do it that way or not. So yes, technically, every time you've got a block of color, you've got a new bobbin, if it's going to be separated from something. Now, obviously, this is a very extreme example, since it's tiny, and I've literally got one, two, three, four, five going. <laughs> so here is what this all looks like because it looks like a big old mess there's actually me method to this madness so here we go my first bobbin on the side here and yes we will show you quickly how to do these center pole bobbins so here we go what kind of needle are you using is that an addy uh yes square? these are the addy turbo square with mm -hmm. textures, mm -hmm. it's like they basically threw everything but the kitchen sink in these needles. Yeah, that was that was a question from chat, by the way. That wasn't yeah. yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, <laughs> all right. So here I've got a color change. So my heart is going to look a little wonky because I was not using a pattern; I was just going at it. So I'm going to change colors from the green to the white. And what am I going to do? Is from the back side. I'm going to put the green here that's just laying across and I'm going to pick up the white from the bottom so that my colors, if you can see that, they're crossed. You always want to do this. Why do you want to do this? Because if you don't, you're going to end up with big gaping holes. You don't want big gaping holes. Big gaping holes are never nice on knitting unless, unless they are supposed to be there. So color change again, going from the white to the green on my next bobbin. Which I'm gonna dig out from here. So I've got the one I'm using right here, which is the white. My new color, which is the green, I'm gonna go behind and over. Oh, that looks like the candy cane going up the side. Look at that. There is method to our madness. There's a reason we show things in the order we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So once again, gonna switch from the green to the next bobbin of white. So green, my next bobbin of white is right here. So I'm going from behind and over. Candy cane. It's just not going to look like a candy cane, but it's still a candy cane. And my last little color change here. Now, again, this is an extreme example. Extreme Knitting 101. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had a question, when do you decide if it's going to be Fair Isle or um, Intarsia? your pattern will tell you. And then it's a bit up to you to decide what you want to do. It's now, based on how far, how long the strand would have to be too. Right? Exactly. And <clears throat> do you need another, you know, d does that color come back later? So it, you know, it depends on a lot of factors. Um, as a knitting teacher, that this is the correct way, the correct method of doing intarsia. Were there places here that I could have carried the yarn? Yes, of course. But as a knitting teacher, I'm telling you this is the correct method. What you do with it afterwards mm -hmm. on you. <laughs> so 
curl wise, yes, we're in time. So purling. Um, now, obviously, as um, a thrower and a picker, this the exact same method of twisting yarns. It's just that you're throwing instead of picking. So going to switch and we colors. We did have here. the question just as you're going in the chat is how do you know whether you go over or under with the working yarn? As long as you're always going in the same direction, doesn't matter. Just pick it and be consistent. <laughs> exactly. I always go from under back over because that's what I got used to. So that is what I do. I always go get my new color from underneath my old color and bring it back. See how it crosses them there? So as long as you're always doing it in the same direction, you can do it from under or over. It really doesn't matter. So once again, going to from the white to the green. So as you can see, I'm going from under the white, twisting and purling. Gauge, but everything's gonna be loosey goosey. Yes, your first projects are not gonna be perfect. How perfect was your first dishcloth? Hmm? There we go. <laughs> so learning new techniques is there's going to be a learning curve. So is it going to be loosey goosey at first? Yes. But practice makes perfect. So twist. And, yeah. and yep. then we just had a question like kind of what do you mean by twisting and twisting? It's just if she had if she didn't do this like under over thing, then there'd be a hole kind of. There, there'd be a hole because you, you'd literally have a gaping hole right here mm -hmm. that you can see like even before I twist. So twisting actually closes that gap up. Yes, the twisting is the under over. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one last time, my green. And there we go. And unfortunately, because there is so much to color work, we are going to cover mosaic and farrell next week. We yep. decided to divide this into two evenings because there were so many different techniques. Yep. <laughs> so we will cover those. That's next week. Next week. Which is, which I is a good time for me to pop a link in the chat so you can sign up for next week. And we also have yeah. two seconds to show how to make the little bobbins, oh, center yes. pull bobbin. So remember this is recorded. I'm going to show it once, but it is recorded so you can watch it over and over and over. To make a little center pull bobbin for your color work, tail end in the hand, holding it. Finger and thumb. I'm always going to go over and around, over and around over and around, over and around, back and forth. Now, how much do you put on your bobbin? It really depends on how much color work you need. So once you've got enough, you cut your yarn using scissors, not ripping like I just did. <laughs> and with this cute little tail end, not the one you're holding in your hand, but the one that you just finished wrapping here, I'm gonna go wrap it around the center of my little butterfly that I just created here and see how I'm just gonna cross it over the loop, wrap it once, wrap it twice, nice and tight. Pop it off your fingers. Depending on how much you've got here, you can wrap it a couple more times around. And what I like to do to secure this is wrap it once around my finger so that I can then tuck the tail in under that loose part. Trying to do this on camera, not the most obvious thing. My tail, the loosey part, loosey goosey part, and I can pull 
There we go. So I've got my little butterfly and my center pole. Ta -da. There we go, center pole. <laughs> so we now go back to um, Laura, who is going to close out the evening. Sure. So thank you for joining us tonight. Remember that we tonight's discount code is color. It's good for 20% off at checkout. We have all kinds of kits that Roxanne has linked in the chat. We have the Elfie tee. We have the Find Your Fade shawl. Um, we also have Washed Out, which is a Hoagie Locatelli pattern. Um, and that is just in three color chunks where you sort of fade between your colors. Um, so those are available as well as just yarn. I believe there might even still be some grab bags. And um, I'm sure there are grab bags. We want them too much for there not to be grab bags. <laughs> and grab bags are perfect for color work. So, and I popped the link in there. Color work continued is next week. And then Nick and I will be talking about mosaic, of which we have samples and kits, and then also stranded knitting. So, um, oh. unless anybody else has any questions, I will say thank you for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, I think we're good. Have a great yeah. night. Oh, we, uh, oh, where is the recording? <laughs> <laughs> Can we pop the YouTube channel in there? Or are they on the website? I can't remember. It comes through in the email. So if you're signed up for the email, you'll get an email that says a link to the recording. Yeah. I think you can, um, even in just in YouTube, I think you can search for Zen, Zen Yarn Garden. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So okay. great. no last minute questions. We will sign off here and don't forget to use color yeah. at checkout to get 20% off the entire site, including the grab bags. Mm -hmm. I just love singing that because, you know, <laughs> grab bags. <laughs> okay. Have a great night, everyone.